inequalities. Because of the inequality symbol, it's possible to have an infinite number of solutions. This is usually shown using a shaded region on a number line or using interval notation. So let's show x is greater than 4 on a number line, and then we'll also show that using inter interval notation. So finding 4 on a number line, we could either use a parenthesis or an open circle to show that we're not going to equal 4 but get very close to it. And the values greater than 4 would be on the right-hand side. And so the shaded region on a number line would either have an open circle or parenthesis at 4, and then shaded to the right. Using interval notation, once it's shaded on a number line, the interval notation is very similar. At 4, we're going to have that parenthesis, and then showing that it keeps going to the right and never stops, we would say in, uh, infinity, and infinity is always in a parenthesis because you can't pinpoint exactly where they stop. And so we would have x is greater than 4 on a number line, and then also an interval notation. x is less than negative 5 or x is greater than or equal to 4. So x is less than negative 5 would have our open circle or parenthesis on negative 5. And if you're going to write a parenthesis, make sure it, the parenthesis points towards the direction you're shading. In this case, we're going to uh, point or we're going to shade where values are less than negative 5, so on the left. So if you did a parenthesis, it would go uh, point to the left. And then we're going to keep going infinitely in that direction. x is greater than or equal to 4 would either be a closed circle or a squared bracket to say include the negative 4 because of the, or excuse me, include the 4 because of the equal line. And then values greater would be to the right. So this would be how it would look if we were using shading. Looking at interval notation, here we would start at negative infinity and work our way up to negative 5, but not include the 5. And then we'd also start at 4, including the 4, and go to infinity. We typically put a union in between to mean that word or, and that would be our interval notation. So if you can shade your answer on a number line, then you can use the, that to help you write your interval notation. Before we get going with solving with inequalities, I wanted to go through a few properties. So let's take a look at a very specific example. If a is less than b, so the example I'm going to give is 2 is less than 5. And then we're going to add a number to both sides. So I'm going to let c be 4. So 2 plus 4 compared to 5 plus 4. On the left-hand side, we get 6. And on the right-hand side, we get 9. And notice that inequality is maintained. So basically, if you started out with 2 and 5, here's my 2 and my 5. Notice that 2 is on the left of 5. And looking at 6 and 9, here is 6 and here is 9. Notice that 6 is still left of 9. So you basically took the 2 and 5 and you moved them four places to the right. Okay, let's take a look at that same idea, and I'm going to stick with 2 and 5. 2 is less than 5, but what if I subtract a value or add a negative to each side? I'm going to go ahead and keep using that c value, but this time it's going to be a negative, excuse me, a c value of 4 because I'm using the minus. So 2 minus 4 and 5 minus 4. 2 minus 4 is negative 2, and 5 minus 4 is negative 1, or excuse me, positive 1. So let's take a look at where our green dots are for 2 and 5. And notice that 2 is on the left, okay? And then once we move everything left four spots by subtracting, we're going to end up with negative 2 on the left and 1 on the right. So our negative 2 stayed on the left. So adding or subtracting the same positive value to each side of the inequality maintains the direction of the inequality. If we started at a less than, we ended with a less than. Started with a less than, we ended with a less than. Let's take a look at property 2. So I'm going to keep going with 2 is less than 5. And now I'm going to pick a negative one. So I'm going to let C be negative 1. So if I take my 2 and I add a negative 1, and I take my 5 and I add a negative 1, I end up with a 1 and a 4 and that inequality is maintained. It stays a less than. Looking at where our 2 was on the left compared to 5, 
and then looking at one and four, the one stayed on the left. Going back to our two is less than five, what if we subtract a negative number? Again, I'm using C of negative one. Two minus a negative one, and five minus a negative one. Two minus a negative one makes three, and five minus a negative one makes six, and that inequality is maintained. So three, or excuse me, two was on the left of five, making it smaller, and then when we subtracted a negative one, we ended up with three is less than six, and three stayed on the left. So adding or subtracting the same negative value maintained the inequality. If we started out with a less than, we ended with a less than. Let's take a look at the third property. Let's start with that same two is less than five. But now we're gonna use C is greater than zero, so I'm gonna look at C equals a two. And I'm gonna multiply both sides by two. So two times two and five times two. On the left, two times two is four, and on the right, five times two is 10, and that inequality is maintained. Here was two and here was five, and the two is on the left, making it smaller. If we doubled them, two became a four and five became a 10, but the four stayed left of the 10, okay? They just got farther apart. Let's take a look at that same two is less than four, or excuse me, two is less than five, and then let's look at dividing both sides by C equals two. So two divided by two and five divided by two. Two divided by two reduces to one. Five divided by two, we can leave it five halves or we could write it as two and a half. In this case, the inequality is maintained. So multiplying by a positive number or dividing by a positive number maintained our inequality. Here's our two and our five. And then after, and two was on the left. After dividing, we got a one and a two and a half. And again, the one stayed on the left. So multiplying or dividing the same positive value still maintained that direction of the inequality. One more property to look at, and we're gonna keep two as less than five. And now we're gonna look at a negative number, so I'm gonna use C as negative two, and we're gonna multiply both sides. So two times negative two and five times negative two, we get negative four and negative 10. In this case, negative four is actually bigger than negative 10. Looking on a number line, what's really happening Two is less than five, so two is on the left of five, but when you multiply by a negative, you're actually reflecting it over the zero because of the negative sign, and now our negative four is no longer on the left of negative 10. Negative four, because of the reflection, moved to the right side and the negative 10 moved to the left. So that changed the inequality direction. The same thing's gonna happen if we divide by a negative. So two is less than five, and I'm using C of negative two, and we're gonna divide both sides by a negative two. So two divided by negative two is negative one. Five divided neg by negative two, if I'm writing it as a decimal, would be negative two and a half. And negative one is actually larger than negative two and a half. Looking on a number line, two is on the left of five. And again, because you're multiplying or dividing by a negative, you're reflecting over the zero. And we end up with negative one moving to the right and negative two and a half being on the left. So if you're multiplying or dividing by a negative value, then the inequality direction changes. In this case, we started with a negative and we flipped it to, or excuse me, in this case, we started with a less than and we flipped it to a greater than. Let's look at example three. And I'm gonna show two ways to solve this. First, I'm gonna show it using the properties we were just using, seven minus two X is less than or equal to five plus four X. And so I'm gonna start to get my X values alone. So minus four X. So I get seven minus six X is less than or equal to five move my seven over to the right-hand side, and I'm gonna divide by negative six, so I need to remember that when I was adding and subtracting, 
I didn't need to worry about the inequality. It stayed in the same direction. Now I'm dividing, and I am dividing by a negative, so I've got to flip that inequality, and I end up with x is greater than or equal to a positive one-third, dividing by that negative. Okay. On our number line, we would have one-third. I could use a closed circle or a bracket and shading to the right. So that means our answer would be one-third with a bracket to infinity. I'm going to show a different way of solving with inequalities, and that's to use an equal sign. But because we're using an equal sign and not our greater than or equal to, in the end, we're going to check the number line and see what regions work and make our, our inequality true. So changing 7 minus 2x equals 5 plus 4x. And I can go ahead and solve the same way moving the 4x, so I have 7 minus 6x, but now I've got equals 5, and subtracting 7, I get negative 2. Dividing by negative 6, this is where it starts to be different. Because it's an equation with an equal sign, I don't need to worry about do I use greater than or less than. That's going to come out when I check my number line, and I still get positive 1 third. So on my number line now, because we switched this to an equal, our extra step is to put one third, that important number on the number line, and we're gonna check on the left, and we're gonna check on the right. So a number on the left is zero. I'm gonna put that back in my original inequality. So seven minus two times zero, is it less than or equal to five plus four times zero? So we get is seven less than or equal to five? And the answer is no. So that means I don't want any shading on the left side of one-third. Let's check a number on the right side of one-third, so maybe x equals 1. So I've got 7 minus 2 times 1. Is that less than or equal to 5 plus 4 times 1? So 7 minus 2 on the left-hand side we get 5. 5 plus 4 on the right-hand side we get 9. Is 5 less than or equal to 9? And the answer is yes. So we shade on that side. Now, we decide, the great, we decide the open circle or closed circle based on the original. Because we had the equal to line, we will include the one-third. So again, we get bracket one-third, comma, infinity as our answer. I tend to use the second method because I know a lot of students forget when to flip the inequality symbol from greater than to less than or vice versa. So this takes the guesswork out and this will also work if you end up getting an answer that says negative infinity to infinity where all regions work. So it also helps you know when there's kind of those uh, tricky ones where it could be no answer or all answers. Let's take a look at number four. I'm going to use that uh, method where I'm going to change it to an equal sign. And that means I'm kind of required to check the number line regions. So I'm going to distribute and solve just like I would with an equation. So I like to simplify here, 3 minus 20 would be negative 17. I like to simplify each individual side before I start to solve. And now let me go ahead and start getting some of my um, variables on the same side. So add 4x, and I'm doing this because I'm kind of thinking ahead here, it's a positive 7x. Again, just in case students have a hard time uh, diff more difficult time working with the negatives. Let me subtract the 1. I get negative 18 equals, whoops, excuse me, 7x. And then dividing by 7 to get the x alone, I get negative 18 sevenths. So I'm going to put negative 18 sevenths on my number line. And then I'm going to check on the left and the right. So negative 18 sevenths would be like negative 2 and 4 sevenths. So let me pick something over here like negative 3, or if you really want, do something really way down here like negative 10 or negative 100. Over here, a quick one to calculate. Um, if I can use a 0, I'll always try to use a 0. So over here, let me uh, sub in negative 10. 3 minus 4, and I've got negative 10 plus 5. 1 plus 3 times negative 10. And negative 10 plus 5 is negative 5. 
and then I've got 3 and negative 4 times negative 5 is 20 and then 1 plus negative 30 is negative 29 so I've got 23 is greater than negative 29 and yes that is true so I'm going to shade in that section okay noticing now that I only have a um, no I don't have an equal sign I only had a greater than sign that means I'm going to use an open circle or parenthesis. Let's go ahead and check x equals 0. So 3 minus 4 parenthesis 0 plus 5. Is that greater than 1 plus 3 times 0? So 3 minus 4 times 5. And this becomes 3 minus 20, which is negative 17. Is that bigger than 1? And no, a negative is not bigger than a positive. So our answer in interval notation would be negative infinity to negative 18 sevenths with a parenthesis on the negative 18 sevenths. Let's take a look at example 5 with a three-part inequality. A three-part inequality is going to be solved in a similar way. Okay, Again, we could change these to two separate equations and check on a number line, or we could use our inequality properties. I'm going to go ahead and use the inequality properties, but again, you could separate this into two separate equations and then check your regions on a number line. So just kind of going back and forth between the two different methods, um, they both could be used. Let me go ahead and start trying to get that x alone by moving the 3. And make sure that if you think about this as an imaginary uh, line where each inequality is, you need to make sure that you subtract 3 to each part of the inequality. Since there's three parts to our inequality, we need to subtract the 3 or add the negative 3 once to each or subtract the 3. So we have negative 7 is less than or equal to negative 2x is less than and here 11 minus 3 would be 8. We're dividing by a negative 2 so be very careful that with this method we need to remember to flip those inequality symbols to the other direction. And negative 7 divided by negative 2 would be positive 7 halves or 3 and a half. And then 8 divided by negative 2 would be negative 4. And then always read it from the inequality symbol. So I could read this from the x as x is bigger than negative 4 and x is less than or equal to 7 halves. Again, once you get that negative 4 and 7 halves, always put them on the number line left or right in order. So negative 4 is on the left because it's smaller, and 7 halves is 3 and a half. It's on the right. It's bigger. If you would like, check each region. So here we can check um, x equals negative 5. Maybe check x equals 0 in the middle, and check x equals positive 5 on the right. So here we have is negative 4 less than or equal to 3 minus 2 times negative 5 is less than 11. So is negative 4 less than or equal to 3? This is going to become a positive 10. Excuse me, positive 10. And then on the right we still have 11. So negative 4 is less than or equal to 13 is less than 11. And so we're checking is negative 4 less than or equal to 13? That part is true. But is 13 less than 11? That part's not true. So this part is not going to have our shaded region. It did not work. Let's try 0 in the middle. Negative 4 is less than or equal to 3 minus 2 times 0 is less than 11. So is negative 4 less than or equal to 3 is less than 11. Negative 4 is less than or equal to 3. That is true. Is 3 less than 11? Yes, this part works. And so we would shade in the middle. Where our four, negative 4 was, we had only the greater than. So that should be an open circle. And at the 7 halves, we had an equal line. So that one we can uh, have be a closed circle or a solid dot. Um, I'm not going to take the time to check right now. Here, greater than at 5, you would go through the same method. And we would end up saying, nope, that one doesn't work either, just like we had here on the left. Okay, So our answer in interval notation would be negative 4 to 7 halves with the 7 halves on the bracket. Example 6, finding the break-even point. The break-even point is where the revenue coming in is equal to the amount of money being spent or another way to say the break-even point is where the profit is nothing. Okay, So the revenue and the cost are given by the revenue function R and the cost function C. 
So where X is the number of units sold. So think of this as a t-shirt production, X is the number of t-shirts sold. Okay. At what production level, level does R at least equal C? So we could say R, if it has to be at least equal to C, then we want it to be bigger than or equal to C. Or your revenue is the money coming in. You want the money coming in being bigger than or equal to your cost. If it's equal, then that's our break-even point. If the revenue is bigger than the cost or money spent, then you get a profit. So let's sub in what we know about revenue. 11x is the function. And let's sub in what we know about the cost function. 6x plus 450. Now again, we could solve this using our equal sign, or we could solve it using our inequality property. I'm going to go ahead and solve using our inequality property. And we know that 5x is greater than or equal to 450. I'm dividing by a positive 5, so I need to maintain my inequality symbol, and I get 90. So on our number line, x is greater than or equal to 90. At 90, because of the equal line, we'd want a closed circle or a bracket, and we're going to face that bracket towards the numbers greater than 90 because of the greater than sign. And so in interval notation, we have from 90 to infinity with a bracket symbol on the 90.